Hello again. Um, this time we're going to continue with the same model, but talk about emitters. So the way we'll start is to just make a layer for all the lights in the model. Uh, just like any other layer in Rhino, you can assign a material per layer. So we're going to just have one layer that's light. So right click in a blank spot in the layer menu and click new layer, call it lights. And to simply make an emitter material, that's what a light is with Maxwell, uh, go into the scene manager and you right click and it says new emitter. Click that guy. By default it won't give you a preview, so if you double click on it, you'll see there's uh, emitter, layer, emitter, and emitter is um, the actual uh, wattage and efficacy of the light. So if we just refresh the preview here for the default emitter, it's basically a 40 watt incandescent bulb, which will do very little to light your scene. So you want to create something that gives you some leeway so that when you're manipulating the different light layers with multi-light you have some options. So usually I massively overpower them, maybe make it um, 4000 watts. And to be able to preview the effect of your 4000 watt bulb uh, you need to change the preview scene. So if you go to the topmost uh, layer in the emitter material you'll see that uh, there's a little drop down here for preview and by default it says default preview but if you click on the arrow you get emitter 10 meters then click refresh and it basically that's like a stage in which to preview different materials so these emitter stages are designed to allow you to see how the light falls off over a distance so you can see there's a scale on the top that says 5 meter 10 meter this still really doesn't look that bright. Also, the light is incredibly harsh. It sort of looks like a uh, metal halide light or um, an old fluorescent. So you normally want to warm it up a little bit, bring it into more of an incandescent range. Um, I'll drag this thing over here and then refresh. And there you can see uh, that it has a warmer tone. So I'll use that as my light, my first light at least, and I'll just call it 4000 watt, 4000 warm. And over here in the scene manager, you see that it's now popped up, and I'll just drag that into the lights. Now, a good policy is to just put each light that you make on a different sublayer of the light. So if you only have one light in the scene, the way I did this would work just fine. But if you have multiple lights in the scene, then you probably want to create a sublayer and just name it what the light is. So I'll call it light, uh, or I'll call it 4000 warm, and then I'll put the 4000 warm material on that layer. And then I'm going to make another sublayer, and I'll make one called 8000 warm. And what I'll do is I'll duplicate the material in the scene manager by right clicking on it and selecting clone material, and then double clicking on my new one, my new material. And you'll see it says 4000 warm, and then parenthetically 2, and so I'm just going to change it to 8000 warm. And, of course, I'm going to make it 8,000 watts. And then refresh it. And you can see immediately that it's brighter. So I'll drag that onto that 8,000 warm layer. Like that. And now I'll just make some simple services to emit light in the scene. Often the easiest way to make lights is to just take an existing surface and 
copy it, extract it, um, and then turn it into an emitter. So in this case, maybe what will work for me is to take the underside of one of these panels, grab it, and turn it into a light. Um, what I can do is just, uh, I'll actually take this one right here. So I'll type in extract surf. It asks me what surfs I want to extract. I'll select this guy. And then it gives me the option up here. Uh, output layer is the same as the input, and the copy is yes. So I can actually select my 4000 warm, change the output layer option to current, and copy yes, then click enter. And now I have this new object, and you see if I click on the properties menu for Maxwell, there it is. It's a uh, 4000 warm bulb. So what I'll do is just kind of drag it off of that flipped up panel so that it's not competing with the surface. Because you can get very strange results if you have two things competing on the same surface. And um, I'm actually going to drag it into the space a little bit too. So it's a little bit more just like a ceiling panel of light. All right, so there it is. But now the question is, what direction is the light going to come out of that object? So to check that, uh, if you have the top uh, tab standard selected, then you get the sidebar that looks like this one. That's on my side. And you'll see there's this icon that is a panel with a bunch of white arrows coming out of the top of it. That's the Analyze Direction panel, so click on that thing. And you'll get some arrows. Um, pointing out of your surface. And so you got to just make sure that they are pointing in the direction you want the light to go. In my case, they are. If they're not, there's this option to flip, and that flips the direction of the arrows. So I'm going to hit enter. Now, to effectively control uh, this rendering with this artificial light in it, I need to have multi light on so that. Um, I'm not kind of stuck with whatever balance of light exists currently in the scene and I can manipulate it. So the way to do this is if you go uh, into the scene manager and select the little folder icon which says output, um, you'll see under engine one of the options is multi-light and so we're going to select intensity. Color and intensity gives you the option, as you might have guessed, to change the color and the brightness of the light, but for now we'll just deal with intensity. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on a few render channels, and if you guys are following along, just do that now. And we'll talk about the use of those in a little bit. So I'm going to turn on the material ID and the object ID. So I got multi-light on, got a light in the scene, got a... So what I'm going to do is actually create one additional light so that we can get a balance between the two. Um, similar idea, I'll just grab a surface and turn it into a light by extracting it and changing the layer. I guess I'm going to grab this door panel. So again, I'll run the command extract surf. I'll select extract surf, select that surface, copy, uh, layer current, and this time I'll make my layer this 8000 watt layer, and copy yes, and then hit enter. And then once again I'll take this, take this guy and just uh, drag it out. I mean, you can always create brand new layers. The nice thing about using existing services is that, is that you know that at least the base orientation will work for you. And it's already in the room. So I'm just going to rotate it and um, using the elevation, I'm going to scale it and make it smaller. And lift it up. 
sort of against this back wall. So then I have these two lights. They have two different materials. They're on two different layers. I should check the direction of this one too. Again, it, it is pointed in the right direction, so that's great. And I'll pick a view to look at this model. I'm also going to take the liberty of removing uh, what should be glass here. Plain glass. I'm just going to turn that layer off. And I'm also going to turn off the trees. Okay, so there's a nice little view. I'm going to make it a little smaller just so it's faster for purposes of this tutorial. And I'll hit Maxwell uh, rendering and export. Now, I would normally hit render, but the one thing that you want to do, and I noticed that some of you guys didn't do this, is just make sure the sun is on so you have something to work with. And I'm going to do a location time. I'm going to make it a little later in the day. Um, I'll still use this New York thing, but I'll just make it a little later in the day. And uh, to use that sky, the kind of coloration of a late in the day sky, I need to switch the type of environment to physical sky. Make sure you use sun is on. And then in output, I'm just going to click auto file naming so that I'm not overwriting the file every time. So that's all set. And now Maxwell render. Okay. Now we're back. Uh, it's been 16 minutes, and my rendering is at sampling level 8. One thing you guys have asked before is about how much time to give renderings. It's a very hard question to answer because it has a lot to do with how many lights are in the scene. Um, but what you'll notice is by default, Maxwell basically wants to render forever, in my case 123 hours. And they set that level really high so that you have time at any moment to stop it when it looks good. Um, I would say it's very unusual to let it go the full uh, 123 hours till it's 25 sampling level. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see, I have the multi-light um, faders down here. And instead of messing with these now while it's rendering, I'm going to stop the render and then start to manipulate them. So click stop, and you notice it says writing output. And now what I can do is, um, underneath each fader, you'll see there's an S and an M. That means solo and mute. It's a syntax taken from audio mixing boards. So on the left side, there's a little preview. And if I hit solo, I can see the effect of just that one light. And then if I hit solo for another one, I can see the effect of two lights. And if I hit solo for the third, and it's the same as them all being on. So what I'm going to do is, right now, on the screen, you see something that looks sort of like dusk, and no really effect from the artificial lights that we added to the scene. So what I can do is just turn down the environment, basically turn down the sun, and the balance starts to nudge towards the artificial lights. And I'm just checking over on the left in the uh, preview to see something that I think looks relatively balanced. What I might do is... Uh, decrease the shutter speed to let a little more light in to our virtual lens, and then I'll hit refresh. And you see that scene totally transforms. So what you can do is every time you hit that refresh, you hit file and uh, save image, and you can save out all these different versions of different lighting arrangements.